Hey, Powers Lake, my friends, Jeff Yalden here. I want to thank each and every one of you for uh, allowing me to be trusted in speaking to the young people and the teachers. I'm truly honored that I got to come back and, and be a part of your life. Thank you. You're very special to me. My friends, something I'm doing now is I'm allowing kids to send me a message or a question that they might have that they wouldn't otherwise ask if they were in front of a group. And so I've got some index cards here of some questions that some of the kids asked. And as I go through it, I pick the ones that um, I need to answer. And, and not that any are more important, but I don't want to make these videos long winded. I also want to say this. This is a message to all of the students, to parents, guardians, to all the staff, community, business leaders of the Powers Lake community. Um, I think it's important that you understand what our kids are thinking and to be present in their lives to understand that our kids need you. So disclaimer, I am not a counselor. I am not um, speaking on behalf of the school. These are my words. The school brought me in again to speak to the kids and the staff, but uh, I am responsible for my words here. If you do need help, please contact the school counselors. They have resources. 911, the suicide hotline, contact your doctor right away. Um, so let me go through this if I could. One of the cards for school staff, be more aware of these things. And I shared this with them and my friends, I'm going to tell you, they are very aware. Bullying, self-harm, suicidal ideation, depression, and anxiety. Students often don't speak up when they need help, but when they do speak up, please listen and actually do something. I want to make sure that young people, you understand, and parents too, our schools and our teachers, administration, counselors, we are human. But I ain't never met someone that teaches, someone that's in education that doesn't genuinely love their kids and their school family. Having said that, like everybody, we only do the best that we can do. And like you, we have our lives. And unfortunately, our teachers aren't gifted with time like I am. And I know that's important. But I want you to know that we can only help you if we know the depth of the question of the help that you need. So as I said in the assembly, my talk with you, it might not be your fault, but it is your responsibility. We want to help, but we need to know. So you got to be honest with us. Um, we do want to listen, but I'll tell you something I tell teachers too. We want to listen, but we can't fix it. You have to be willing to do the work. So you can't come to somebody every day with the same problem, hoping that it's going to get fixed. What are you doing about it? And I'll tell you what, I don't think problems get fixed easily. It is one day at a time. Bullying, uh, there's no... No, no, it's wrong on every level. But you have to also let people know exactly what is happening, who is doing it, where it's happening. And I have a record of it. The other thing is bullying is one thing, but kids being mean is another. I'm not saying it's okay or it's acceptable, but clearly it is not. Um, Self-harm. Well, I want you to know that self-harm is how we want to feel or we want control. 
So we're asking for help. I like that you're going to a trusted adult because we're going to give you the same help that you're getting from self-harm, but we're going to do it in a very safe and more appropriate, healthy manner. So don't expect your teachers and staff to be able to recognize it when they're not looking. But if you can say, I need help, I need to talk to someone, and we understand, my friends, I tell you what, we're going to jump on it, and we're going to support and love you as much as we can to get you the, the help and the care that you need. Um, and the same thing with thoughts of suicide. Um, and remember, thoughts are thoughts, but feelings is a whole nother thing. And I want you to be comfortable talking to someone about your feelings. And if you're feeling that you might want to harm yourself or harm other people, that needs to be addressed immediately. I don't think suicide is ever the answer. I do think and feel very strongly that when you ask for help and we identify what you're thinking and feeling, we can give you the help you need and, and you can live a very healthy life. Um, but again, I ask you to have the courage to ask for help. And it's, it's so okay. Um, and that's the same thing with depression and anxiety. You don't have to live with this and feel like you're crazy because you're not. Depression, and maybe it's sadness, but maybe it's sadness that is lingering around too long. I don't know, is it situational depression? Is it clinical depression? If we're not talking, we can't help you understand and define what is on your heart and the pain that you're feeling. My friends, we gotta talk. Uh, I'm so proud of you for asking this. How do you find your place in life? How do you find your place in life? I think over time. I'm not even sure that's a question that can really be answered in the here and the now. But if it's something that's stressing you, I, I want you to think about this. My goal is to show up, be present, do the best I can. And I think by doing that, it's alleviated so much pressure and anxiety and stress that I just, I just want to love people. And I think that has become my purpose, my passion, my joy. And so maybe that has become my, my place in life. So do we ever find, especially at a young age. I mean, do you really think we find our place in life? Like, I'll ask you this. Who's the hardest person to get to know? Ourselves. So if we're trying to figure ourselves out, how do we even find our place in life? What makes you valuable as a person, as a friend, as a teammate? What makes you valuable as a mom, dad, teacher, employee, a boss? If you lost everything that made you valuable, would you still have value? I think finding our place in life is a matter of embracing and being present in the process of the journey we're on. Because my friends, I think one thing that adds to this anxiety is like we feel like we're playing a game that has to be won but we're living a life that there's no victory at the end. There is no winner or loser. I think your place in life is determined by your presence, your purpose, your self-validation, your confidence, your self-esteem, your, your being. 
Be proud to be you. That's a great question, man. How do you find your place in life? What is the most harmful thing that someone can do to themselves? <clears throat> so if any of the adults are listening, um, I'm not saying this is your kid, but this is our kids. It takes a village to raise a child. And I want you to understand that these are our kids asking these questions. And I'm wondering what is the most harmful thing that someone can do to themselves? I think any self-harm is somebody asking for help, but going about it in the wrong way. They want help, they want to feel, they want some control. But I want you to understand that you can get the same thing that you're asking in self-harm in a more healthy way if you can open your heart and find that trusted, significant adult that can listen and, and validate your feelings and support you. So I think whether you're self-medicating or you're pulling your hair or you're cutting or scratching or reckless behavior, um, banging your head against the wall, I, I don't know if there is a worse form of self-harm, but I wanna say any self-harm is not coping in the healthy way in which I want you to cope and problem solve. I want you to get tools to be able to deal with this. So I think what is the most harmful thing? I think if you have to ask anything that you are doing is the most harmful thing and we need to talk to someone and do something that is more healthy that um, my friend, again, I am so thankful that you had the courage to ask this question and I hope whoever may have written that down is uh, aware and is considering I need to talk to someone and because that's where I want you to be. How do I talk to my family? I don't understand them. Dr. Stephen Covey says, seek first to understand, then to be understood. Our young people, this is the first generation of this population of, of people growing up with this noise and the social media and uh, it's overwhelming. But yet our parents too, it's the first generation of parents that are having to parent today's young people with all this noise. And um, so what I wanna say to you is I tell parents, let's try and understand where our kids are coming from before we expect our kids to understand where we are coming from. And I wanna tell you as a teenager, try and understand where your parents or teachers, coaches are coming from before you expect them to automatically try and understand where you are coming from. And so you ask the question, how do I talk to my family? I don't understand them. I think it's simple communication. You don't need to understand them. You don't necessarily need to agree with them, but communication is about, it's about listening. It's about trying to see another person's point of view. It's about agreeing to disagree, but it's not just communicating and talking. It's also, it's about listening. And I think when we do communicate and we do listen, we do learn. And so I want you to just get comfortable talking to people, especially your family, and maybe you'll understand more the more you choose to want to listen. Don't try and push it away because our family and our teachers and our coaches have great wisdom and experience. And I'll tell you something, the smart people learn from their mistakes but the really smart people learn from the mistakes of others. Communication, my friends. I, I love this. I love that you're asking these questions. How do you deal with anxiety without medication? 
I appreciate that. Um, listen, I, I'm on medication as a man that loses mental illness. I'm in therapy. And I think that combined with parental involvement is really important. However, there are a lot of people that don't really believe in medicating our teenagers. And, and I don't want to disagree with that. I want to applaud you for asking that question and trying to do it more natural and, and being more aware. And I think you can. So there's dealing with anxiety. There's mindfulness. There's being presence. There's there's meditation. There's breathing. Inhale peace. Exhale love. I want to encourage you to Google and YouTube some of this. I also want to invite parents and teachers to let's be more aware that there are kids that want to know how do we reduce the stress and the anxiety or this overwhelmingness, um, but without medication. And there are simple things that we can do every day that can bring us from a one low, 10 high stress. Instead of being in a six, seven, eight, where we can't really be present, how do we get ourselves to come down to a three, four, five, so that something doesn't trigger an emotion and our anxiety is raised and we might have a panic attack? So, great question. I am a Christian. Does me having anxiety make me less of a Christian? Not at all. God loves you. God loves everybody. And at the end of the day, he has the final judgment. But having anxiety or living with mental illness, whatever you want to call it, does not make you crazy. Anxiety, stress can come from the weather, the food, all of the social media. It can come from being overwhelmed, school, the expectations, the pressures, the, the trying to fit in. Having anxiety and learning to cope is a very normal thing. But my friend... God loves everybody. God doesn't judge you. I just, I love the question. I want to talk to my pastor about it, but don't know how because it's such a small town and I don't want people to know. To all of the parents, teachers, kids, anyone that's listening to this, this is exactly what I'm talking about. We have a choice. We can either be part of the problem or we can be part of the solution. If we're afraid to talk because we're afraid people are going to judge us, then we're part of the problem. Your pastor wants to know. And your pastor wants to probably give you a hug like I do. And to say, it's okay. My friends, you're not alone. You're not the only one. I don't want you to worry about it being a small town. I want you to take care of yourself first because if we care more about our reputation than our own mental well being, then that's a problem. And if you have the courage to do what's right and speak up, that's the solution, then you're going to invite more people to do the right thing too. I think it takes a lot of courage to want to ask for help. I think the strong people are the ones that aren't afraid. And I want you to be that person of influence that invites others to understand that no matter how are you feeling or what you might be going through, it is okay to talk to someone. My friends, I talk to someone every day. Hey, Powers Lake, thank you, my friends. My heart is so full that I'm getting to answer your questions. I never want to leave you without 
being able to answer your questions. People love you. It takes a village to raise a child. You're not alone. We're all in this together. But at the end of the day, your validation shouldn't come from people, places, or things. You got to validate yourself, my friends. I'm Jeff Yalden. I love you. And I'm so thankful that you gave me this honor to be able to plant seeds and be influential in your lives. So, uh, my friends, I wish you the best. I'm on social media at Jeff Yalden. Take care.